My son was about 10 years old and we were out in the living room, basically where we are right now. And we heard him crying out to us for help. So we rushed to his room and when we got there, we saw him on his bed, basically doubled over, holding his stomach, looking at us in sheer panic, pain, with that look like, Dad, Mom, you've got to help me. So my natural thought was, oh, we'll take him to emergency. I'm sure the doctors will figure this out. And then my natural thought came under the authority of what the Holy Spirit told me. And he said, don't go. Just don't go. It was like a gut feeling I could not deny. Don't go. And my mind's telling me, you got to take him. That's what's right to do. Well, okay, I'll pray for a few minutes. And we did a little bit of bargaining here. I'll do a little bit of prayer and see where this where this goes. So I prayed for a few minutes, nothing happened. I'm thinking, okay, go to the hospital. So I'm about to go to the hospital. And again, this feeling comes over me, don't take him to the hospital. He needs your help right now. You might not even get him there. I watched my son being struck in the stomach by something that we couldn't see with our eyes. And I was praying to God, praying to Jesus with my whole heart for help, crying out to him. And nothing was happening. This went on for 45 minutes. The guilt of not taking him to the hospital was rising. The disillusionment with God was rising. My own feelings of failure that my prayers weren't working were rising. My wife's looking to me. My son's looking at me. My son is exhausted. He's being literally pile-drived in the stomach repeatedly. I don't even know how he stood up to it. In his bed, with his eyes looking at me, saying, you got to help me. Help me. Well, at my lowest point, and I put my head down, something happened. Something happened that started right here in my innermost belly. This anger started to rise up. I could feel it rise up right into my vocal cords. And I started to say something that I hadn't planned on saying. And this is what I said. Whoever you are that's tormenting my son, you were defeated 2,000 years ago and you've got to before I could say the last word, go, all of a sudden, in a literal nanosecond, everything stopped. The punching stopped. My son laid flat in the bed in the most peaceful state. And he slept for the rest of the night. And he never once had a problem again. It was over. We were exhausted, depleted. Sometimes I think I'm still recovering from it. I cannot explain to you how thick the air was, the demands on my emotions, my mind, my body. It was the most intense war that I have ever seen. My son's life was at stake. Something was punching him in the stomach that I couldn't see. And the moment I spoke the word of God, it stopped. My prayer was answered. How could this have happened? Well, that led me to investigate how something like this could happen in my home. And that's beyond the scope of what I'm going to share with you today. But the Lord did show me how this thing, this evil spirit, gained access to my son. And we were able to remove that and close those doors. And we learned a lot about spiritual warfare. So you might be thinking, yeah, you know, demons and all that, that's all fairy tale stuff. That's stuff for movies and, you know, for people who are kind of out of it to believe in that or super spiritual people. Well, let me tell you, if you were in my spot watching your child getting pile-drived in the stomach, you just imagine somebody just starting to punch your stomach, your son's stomach repeatedly and what it would look like. It's exactly what it looked like. It's not a bellyache. He's literally covering himself. And he's had no physical problems before or after. Praying, praying, praying. And the moment I speak and have a conversation with this being 
and reminding it of what was done on the cross 2,000 years ago by Jesus Christ, my Savior and my hero, it leaves. It can't stand up to the Word of God and my faith in that Word and what He did on the cross. And I just would... For days before this event, God had prepared me. I was thinking so much of what He did on the cross. I would meditate on His whipped and broken body on the cross and the blood that was shed and the message that sent out to the spirit realm that there's victory. There's victory over the powers of darkness. I would just focus on that. God had prepared me for that. So my faith was ready for the occasion. It's real. This story can change your life if you let it. Spiritual warfare is real. I was allowed to experience this, I believe, for a purpose, and that was to share it with people, including you tonight, to let you know it's very real. This was my situation. This is what God gave me to do in this situation. It is unique. God would have to lead you to know what to do if you're facing a situation like this. But this is what He gave me to do. Many times when we face problems that appear to be unnatural and spiritual, He's shown us different ways to do it and different things to do. But in this case, it was definitely bringing the Word of God and my sword and pushing back that demon and getting rid of it. So, do you believe demons are real now? They're real and they're very powerful and they do have the power to kill people. But Jesus Christ has more power. So align yourself with Him and get away from these books and movies that are talking about the power of witchcraft as if it's fantasy in some make-believe world. It is not. I'm telling you, you're only opening yourself up to the powers of darkness and giving them access to come at you in your life. You don't want to do that. It's not just literature, it's reality. The Bible tells us very clearly that demons are real. In fact, they're fallen angels. You don't want to mess with them. Learn about the Word of God. Get the Word of God instilled in you and set yourself free. He'll show you what to do. You see, I'm not here to tell you about how great I am as a Christian and how much power I've got. I'm telling you about the power of the Word of God and the power of faith in the Word of God and the power that I have to take scriptures and to meditate on them, not just read them once, but over and over and over until your mind is renewed and filled with faith and getting away from anybody or anything that's making you doubt the Word. That's what I had to do. Stay single-minded. And it saved my son's life. My son is an extremely gifted and talented young man who has songs that God keeps blessing him with. He has a calling on his life. And I know that God's hand is on him and saved his life to be used for a greater purpose. So if you're under attack and you think, you know, where's God? Listen, God's got a great calling on your life. That's why the enemy's coming at you. God wants to give you the tools you need to be an overcomer. But you're going to have to understand that what I've shared with you tonight is real. I did not lose my son that night because of the Word of God because of my faith in the Word and my spoken declaration of it, my direct command to a demon. And that's all this thing could have been because nobody else was in the room punching my son. It listened to the Word of God. It had to obey it. So, I encourage you to get in the Word of God, study what Jesus did on that cross. It is the greatest treasure you're going to find. A lot of people like to talk tough and talk big about what they're going to do and how powerful they are and their wealth, their connections, what they are going to do, their armies. Let me tell you, the greatest, most powerful individual is Jesus Christ. And those who know what He did on the cross have the greatest power on this earth to bring salvation and wholeness to people and to nations. So let's rise up and believe what Christ did tonight, today, or this morning, wherever you're at, and lay hold of the Word of God in your life and see the victory.
Here's Colossians 2.15. This is the verse that I used to set my son free from this evil spirit that was trying to destroy my son's life. When he, this is Christ, when he had disarmed the rulers and authority, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, he made a public display of them, exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal procession, having triumphed over them through the cross. That's verse number one. Jesus Christ, when he hung on the cross, bled and died, stripped demons of their power. And for those of you who believe that took place, like me, you'll have victory over those supernatural forces. The work was finished at that point, but can only be utilized through faith in what happened. Not religion, but real faith in what the Son of God did that all-important day. In fact, I believe it was the most important day in human history. All the power you need to have victory is right there. You just got to believe it. There's times I've claimed this verse when it feels, it feels like all hell has come against me. My mind is so overwhelmed. I just sang, Jesus defeated the devil and I'm standing with him. I put my faith in that precious blood that he shed. I'm going to win because he already won it for me. I'm going to keep believing, keep holding on to what he did. And I'm going to walk right out of this sickness. I'm going to walk right out of this stress. I'm going to walk right out of this challenge that I'm facing. And sometimes walk right out of this torment that's coming from something. Like trying to stop me from doing what God wants me to do. I win. I win. I win. And so can you. I'm going to give you the second verse. This verse is equally as powerful and what gave me the fortitude to really stand up to this demon and speak to it. It is in Revelation 12, 11, and here it is. And they overcame and conquered him, the devil, because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith, even, was, even when faced with death. So, it says right there that we overcome the demons, the devil, through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What we proclaim to believe, what we speak the Word of God, what we testify of. We overcome. <laughs> You're not a victim. You're more than a conqueror through Christ, but you just got to believe it. And I've shared this testimony with you today so that you could have a real live example in the year 2016 to know that these aren't archaic scriptures. These are living words that have power and life more power than a nuclear plant to come against the forces that have come against your mind, your heart, your body, your finances. There is a war that's being waged in the spiritual realm and I've been able to see it for a purpose. And that's to share with you today. You're going to have to make a decision with what you're going to do with this information. But please don't neglect what Christ already did for you on that cross. The power is there. Whether you feel it or not, believe it. Fill your mind with these scripture verses until they come alive. It's what saved my son's life. It's real. Here's my son Noah. I remember that day like it was yesterday and God did heal me from a demon that was punching me. Everything my dad said is true and God really did heal me and demons are real. I saw it and it was a big day for me. Thank God that he was there and Jesus died on the cross to defeat the devil.